Hey, what's going on guys? Double One Eight Set Shadow here. Well, Set 9 is now officially out, and then we had our new episode from Vanguard last week, which had a really, really big twist to it. And today was the announcement for Clarissa, the dress-up version. And then with that, there is a lot more to digest on that front with more market movements that I have been seeing. So let's just get straight into it for today. And we're going to start with set nine. In particular, I'm just going to go over some of the singles that I've been paying attention to. Well, I mean, I've been looking at the whole set in general, but there are a few to call out here, such as one of the big winners that I didn't expect this to happen, but... Avangarda is already running really, really low on quantities for its triple rare. If you don't know, this is the restanding mech unit for Brantgate, where if the attack hits or you Persona Road during the turn, it stands itself up with a minus one drive as long as you discard one. This is also a unique card where, in order to activate its effect, you must also have Blue Death Star Sora, period, in the soul in order to use it. And if you don't know, Death's Sora period is the starter of the ride line for this deck. Which means, the only thing you really have to be concerned about is not expending too much soul. Also, if you fight against prison, you have to be extra careful not to expend too much soul. But anyway, this card went up already. On release, the card ended up going to about $10, and I think even on pre-release it was 10 or lower. But all of a sudden, everyone just bought out copies, and now we're looking at 15. I honestly didn't expect this to happen. I thought it would stay at 10 or eventually go lower. It might futuristically as until we get set 10, this deck is not going to be too powerful to utilize. So if you're holding out for set 10, that definitely makes sense. Viamont's Bruce is doing okay, all, all right. And for... The initial release, $10 is not too bad for its triple R overall. We still have a fair amount of quantities there. The FFR is not looking too hot in terms of high value. It dropped off hard from its market price. And the same goes for the DSR, where it's not too hard of a drop off, but it is still over $200 right now to pick that up. I would anticipate prices will still go down on this one. Well, we'll see what happens with that. For those of you who saw my post, you'll know that I only got six copies of this Dragon Tree marker out of the case that I opened for this one. I only bought one case, by the way, and if you're also wondering about FFR ratios, I only pulled two FFRs, but I did pull Viamont's Bruce DSR as well. Anyway, this card is $7, $7.50 at least, when you count shipping and all the things here, and... All I can say is that I hope we get more prints of this in future sets because only six copies in a case really isn't good when people want to play Griffo Gia. And then if you're not even playing Griffo Gia, once you're playing Masks, you need more Dragon Tree markers, so there better be more in set 10. Clean Sweep Dragon, one of the bigger triple, du sorry, double R's in the set, is doing okay in price as well. We're looking at a lot of copies overall. For $9.50 at the regular version, and then the FR is almost $20. For those of you who don't know, you counterblast one during a Persona ride turn, then choose three rear guards, put them into their respective souls, and then this unit gets 5k for each one. So basically a 15k plus plus a board wipe. It's a strong card, but again, you do need to be Persona ride to use it, but it is an axe skill, so you can have this on the board prior to that. Gromphia! I didn't realize that this one was also low on quantities as well, but we're only at five listings left for the triple R. And initial copies for this one, yeah, we were looking at two, three dollars to start off with. It's interesting to see. But yeah, of the triple R boss units that we got, this one is still the lowest value, but it has the potential to keep going up with these buyouts. Will it continue to go really high? Probably not. I don't. But again, I got Avagarda wrong, so I would say maybe $8, but we'll see. 
Burrow Mushrooms. This one's a rare from the set and also has an FR, but this is a good one to have in your back pocket simply due to its utility. So you can put it to soul to call two plant tokens, and then if you have Granfia, you can give a rearguard 5k. Normally, you can just play this for the first skill, because it's also a 6k, mind you, so it's not the great for the greatest in terms of boosting. But if you're playing Roroa, this is a good card to keep in your back pocket as well. And overall, the card's already a dollar, so might want to pick them up sooner than later in that case. Griffogila is pretty low value right now. We're looking at $4 to start off with for the triple R, and then the FFR is now in the $50 range, while the DSR fell off more heavily than Bruce did. Now it's under $200 to pick up, and I don't think anybody actually picked this up yet outside of the $300 one from the pre-release. So this one still has potential to push downward as well, probably even more to an extent than Bruce. And finally, Zargon. This will be the last one I cover for set 9, but Zargon is also $2 for its... It's a rare, by the way. But this one allows you to take two cards from your drop and put them to soul, as long as the boosted unit hits. And the nice thing about this skill is that if you're playing something like Barrow Magnus, you can give Barrow Magnus the skill, then this card would go to soul for Barrow Magnus' skill, and then you put the cards into your soul anyway. So it has that utility, but otherwise it's just another grade one that can fill your soul, but it's a really nice one that provides on-hit pressure. So it, there's a reason it's more expensive out the gate, and... I'm not sure if this one can get any lower. Now, Bushiroad also made an announcement that they are changing the fighter rules for the English version starting the 7th, which means that ban list I talked about before looks like it's actually coming, despite me thinking that it wasn't. So it will end up disrupting the it will end up disrupting the BSF tournament. However, I will note that BSF tournaments are going to be in a lull right now. We had our last one this past weekend, but we won't have another one until the end of April, and then it will continue on through May. But the first one I want to talk about is Gigi. So I mistakenly said that Brainwash Swirler and Chronojet had a choice restriction. I was incorrect there, and I apologize. But it's Gigi with Brainwash Swirler. So you'll be able to use Gigi in the deck or Brainwash Swirler if that if, if that rule comes into play. And then for Brainwash Swirler himself, seeing the additional reprint in set 9, the price fell out a lot more than I thought it was going to. I said it might fall out to as low as 40, given that this is still a 1 per case for set 9, or 2 per case if you're really lucky. But it is $30, $32 right now, so if you need a play set, you might want to pick it up regardless. If the choice restriction does go into effect, you can still play Brainwash Swirler and Chrono Jet Dragon. You just won't be able to play GG. And then if people opt not to play GG, I can see them playing more copies of Gunram instead, which the price is going up on this one too. It's already over $15 again, despite Festival Collection having a reprint for this one. But BSF is going to be occurring and continuing before that reprint comes into effect, so that makes perfect sense. The other choice restriction is Combine Russia with EVA, where the price is still in the $30 range, and we're looking at 8 listings overall for that one. So do pay attention this Friday, and we will see what ends up happening on that front. EVA herself is $16 minimum to pick up, and we are looking at overall, <laughs> I mean, everything else is still either cheap or really expensive, depending on the rarity type of what it is. Obscuded is also starting to drop off in price a little bit, but that's still $11. I'm pretty sure they'll sell a little quickly. As for the Triple R from set 8, though, it's still $3, so... A good time to pick that up, especially if we do get the Combined Russia Restriction and players stop to opt to play this one instead. And then we've got Rebel Form Tempest, who 
sold out yesterday, so I was definitely going to cover it, but it looks like one listing went up at $75 a piece, and we are looking at $70, $73 sales. Get your copies up there if you don't want this card, because they are selling. And, yeah, that's all I can say about that. The surprise tech from last week's Vanguard episode, Trajeweled. <laughs> I'm not going to say any more just to, just to avoid spoilers, but this card is now $20 again after a long time coming. It's been sitting at the $15 mark for a while, but yeah. You might want to shop around for this, but I only anticipate this to go up for a little while. And I also want to note that Bless Favor is also running out of quantities. There's only one listing left for the set 6 variant. Let's take a look at... Let's take a look in general. Nine listings left for set 1, but we're starting at $10, $12... Ooh, yeah. Yep. It's finally starting to happen. Bless Favor is going up in value, so... You'll have to shop around a bit for this one, as there aren't too many copies left to take advantage of. And I also have to talk about draw triggers again, because more stuff is happening. And not just draw triggers, but this these are all set 7 reprint triggers. So you can already see Riley is down to one copy at $35, that's insane. And if you take a look at actual sales, 2018, 20... Yeah, this is now selling pretty consistently at $20 a piece. And even if the choice restriction for Chrono Jet does go into play here, I don't think that's going to change too much in its value. It might end up becoming $10 again. But when you take a look at the set 4 versions, we're still high up there. And Lena, Lena is actually at one listing now completely sold out for its rare to $15. This is the SP Parobi, but the regular Parobi is over 5 now, and Flare Veil is also running out of quantities, so draw triggers are still getting up there. If you have extra copies and you don't want them, they are selling well. And now, let's get into Clarissa. Clarissa has been announced for Festival Collection 2023. Overall effects are that... It can search you, aim to be the strongest idol from the drop board deck on Persona Ride, and then if its attack hits, you draw two and give all of your earns corrects another 5k power, but it's a once per turn. And we also got two new earns corrects units as support cards towards the deck, which means now you have more than five different earns corrects to choose from when it comes to aim to be the strongest idol and then just deck play in general. But in terms of single listings, there aren't too many changes so far in terms of what we've seen before. I mean, the SPs are still really inflated based off of what we saw beforehand. Will they hold their value or not? Well, we'll see how many more listings end up going on the market before that happens. And then, of course, aim to be the strongest idol is... Still plenty available for its double R, though 11 listings, so if you are planning to play Cl Clarissa, that's about as good as you get. And the SP is out of stock completely, having sold at $10 latest, and that's about where it ends up. So Clarissa has now been announced, and we now have a general idea of the support, so if you are still looking to build Clarissa, your price points are where they're at. In terms of low rarity, you don't have not you don't have much to worry about in that sense as long as you pick them up in good time. Thanks for watching you guys. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video and I will see you guys next time.